Welcome to another One Thing. My name is Neil Bauer. I am your host. I'm joined again by the lovely Kim and Jody from ePayments. A, a fresh approach to payments. I needed to extend it because every time it's too short. Today, we are with a very special guest that I am beyond happy to introduce to everybody. A wonderful actor, writer, director, man. Teacher. Educator. Oh my gosh, you're right. Absolutely. He teaches uh, acting classwork. A uh, wonderful person that I am more than happy to be acquainted with. I can't say friends because your brother will kill me. Jack Plotnick. <laughs> Hello, everyone out there. Thank you for those very beautiful words. I, yeah, I think we hit it all. I think gat, you skipped gat about. Oh, I knew there was one. There was Gadfly, <laughs> but it's a lot of labels. And that's important to be a well-rounded person who is a whole bunch of different things. Because, you know, as humans, we're all one. So you, we sort of share everything in common with everyone. You could be anything. Oh my gosh. Well, there, my, my one question is over. That's what I was going to say. Are we all my one thing? <laughs> the, the, the ways I got introduced to you was you were in a film. It's just still one of my favorite films of all time. And I'm not just saying that I have actively promoted this. I've tweeted this. I've shared this with everybody. I can my, one of my favorite roles of yours is girls will be girls. that's because you are a deranged and sick person. Good to make a difference. This is not my one thing, but I want to ask about Girls Will Be Girls. How did Evie come about? Like, I only know Evie from that, but apparently Evie has a much deeper history. Well, Girls Will Be Girls is a movie I produced and starred in, uh, <clears throat> and I play an eight, like an 80 to 100 year old washed up actress, alcoholic, mm -hmm. and um, my friend Richard Day wrote and directed it. And it's very John Waters. If you like, if you like, like mm -hmm. really, edgy humor um you'll enjoy it. it 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 he's he there's no one better at writing a, a joke than richard day and it's got it, the, the the line the quotable lines in this movie come fast and furious i was so busy being an astrophysicist but what richard did was he took these characters um all the women in the movie are played by men so he he knew that I had a character named Evie that I would do in my comedy sketch shows. It was just one of many characters I, I'd been doing in, in my comedy shows. And then he took these two performers who also play women, uh, although they do it more exclusively, Miss Coco Peru and Varla Jean Merman. And um, they're both incredible characters and very talented, funny performers. And he put all three of us together, kind of almost like the Golden Girls, you know? Uh, and... Um, <laughs> But I had I had been doing Evie just she was just one of my characters, but I really enjoyed doing her. And I we made a, a film where Evie is on Hollywood Boulevard looking for her star because she wants to shine her star. <laughs> she can't find it because in the end, she doesn't have one. But anyway, so that that film took off in the gay film festivals. And um, so she started to have this sort of life. But then Richard immortalized her, thank goodness. And uh, I'm just so proud of that movie, yeah. I love that. I was watching some of the things that you were doing during COVID with the Imagineers. And I thought that was so cool. And when you would dress up like the woman, like what goes into your mind? And this is not my one question, but like what when you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to insert myself into this video, but this needs to be a woman. But then I saw in the other one where you're like, no, I'm gonna be a man, so what? What inspires you to even well, say, oh, well, this needs Evie or this needs yeah. this person? Well, <clears throat> I like to do everything. So if I if I if, if there's a video where I can play a woman and a man, I will. But anyway, the what happened with that was that I was freaking out about quarantine, as we all were. And I was watching a lot of Disney videos to, to just sort of escape my my uh, life and going down YouTube wormholes. And I discovered those old uh, wonderful world of Disney um, episodes where I I'd never seen it. Walt, Walt Disney is like showing uh, his audience the rides he's creating for his new right. park Disneyland. And, and um, I wanted to escape into these videos, you know, escape my reality. But then on top of that, one of the videos had a, 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 an Imagineer who looked just like me. Now, I've, I've always been obsessed with Imagineers. I grew, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an Imagineer. What could be better, right? <laughs> yeah. so anyway, that was what gave me the idea. I said, wait a minute, he looks like me. I could be him. And, and while I was doing that, I, I realized it was a fun way for me to get to make fun of 
the rides or the sort of 1960s patriarchal uh, misogyny that you could sort of smell under the surface of these videos. And then I and then I would just start being the different people I'd see in the background of the videos. And a lot of them were women. And then I started to realize, well, these these women, these Imagineers, they're not given any time to talk on screen. So I was like, well, I'll, let's explore what she would say if the camera lingered on her. And so that's that's how that happened. It was I, so funny, your expressions and how you think it would be this, but then you're like, how do I know you? Oh, I think it's going to go into, you know, you think you're going to tell some story and you're like, oh, I went to grade school. Okay, great. Let's move on. You know, and I was just like, <laughs> what? And so I uh, love uh, it. Thank you. I, I, yeah, they're a lot of fun to make. Uh, and I've got, I think there's about five of them out there. People can watch if you're curious. It, yeah, it's been thrilling. But the best part is when Imagineers actually like reach out to me and people who know Imagine. Like to me, that's like they, they say that when in one of my videos come out, the, um, this group of Imagineers will all get together and watch it. And for me, that makes my head explode because I love Disney and I love Imagineers. And so even though I'm poking fun at it, they, they can tell it's out of love. The original people that you, that you were inspired by are now inspired by you. Oh, well, they're definitely, they, they seem That's to be amazing. tickled by, they never thought that, that I would give voice to the original Imagineers, Harriet Burns, Mary Blair, uh, Blaine Gibson. It's like, why would anyone do that? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, by the way, I have a massive Disney library up here. I started off as an animator. So unsung heroes of that world, like in Imagineering, yeah, all of the people behind the scenes crafting all of that, nobody knows who they are. So thank you for bringing attention to the, the people behind the scenes. I love art. I love artists. And I love anything that that empowers them or or kind of inspires other people to to be artistic. You know, that's a perfect transition because artists are different. Like a painting, a, a painter is far different than an actor. So, so you're always transitioning from theater to screen to writer to animated character. So, a lot of people have difficulty interacting with other groups, talking with other people, or kind of getting outside their comfort zone. What's the one thing you'd recommend, because you have so many different interactions at so many different levels with so many different people, what's the one thing you'd recommend to people who are having difficulty transitioning from one group to another? Wow, it's funny that I brought up the fact that we're all one uh, right at the top of this, but I, I think um, while there's absolutely truth to the fact that when you're interacting with a new group, they have a language and they have a, a, a things you might not know, but I would recommend just kind of not focusing on that and remembering that you know everything you need to know and then there's more you can learn. But the trick for me to jump from, let's say I, I was at, working as a film actor and then all of a sudden I was directing a Broadway musical was for me to not see it as a different thing, but to see it as part of who I am. And that is, I label myself, not as a film actor or a Broadway director, I label myself as joyful creator. Ooh, and so I everything I do falls very easily into that category. So I wasn't daunted by, by being tasked to suddenly direct a Broadway musical because it's what I've always done my whole life. And the thing that you're on earth to do, you you've been doing since the start. And like, even as a fourth grader, I was a joyful creator. And then I got involved in different avenues where I could do that. And so what you wanna do is if you're interacting with a new group is to first off, get rid of your anxiety about feeling like an outsider because that anxiety will make it difficult for you to be joyful and present when you talk with them. And so I have a chapter, I have a free book for actors on my website that shares everything I teach. But one of the things I teach is, for instance, actors is to say to yourself, I'm not an actor. Because if you think you're an actor, all of a sudden the pressure to have trained for 20 years and to know all the secrets that actors know. I don't, I just say to myself, you know what? I release and destroy my need to be an actor. I'm not an actor. I'm just here to be me and play in the circumstances. And so it is with, and whenever you're entering a new work environment, you'd probably want to say, you know what? My anxiety is coming from the fact that I'm afraid that I don't know enough about, let's say, publicity. So just say to yourself, look, I don't need to. There's nothing I need to know, but I'm open to learning, you know? And so, but I belong here because they all 
came to this different ways. We all think there's only one way to become a publicity person or one way to become an actor. It's like everybody gets their, their own unique journey and not everyone has read the same books or trained with the same teacher. And personally, I don't think you have to train at all. Um, like I never took a single class in screenwriting, but I wrote and directed a feature film. I never took a single class, you know, uh, because I know that art is passed down through the experience of it. So watching a movie, I, you sort of know everything you need to know to make your own, but there are things you can learn uh, if you want to, but you don't have to. So do, am I starting to answer your question? You got it. You said it before you even started answering the question. We are all one. Like that is why I was saying, like, I think you answered my question right at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I think it's perfect learning and experience. Uh, and again, I took Jack's acting class. I asked if I could step in because I was, you know, quarantine, it was right before quarantine or right around the time where I was like, I need to figure out what I'm doing. And well, he blew me away is, is what happened. Neil, you, I, I mean, you were as good or better than anyone that night. And, uh, I, I think you're a fantastic actor. It was a thrill. To I was it. blown away that he could pick up a scene in his first, it was like, you're, you know, you hadn't done acting classes and he's picked up a scene and he did it and it was hysterical and, and really quite good acting. Cause, but, it, but, you know, acting's easy. You just pretend it's happening. It's not hard, but a lot of people make it harder than it is. And you didn't. I think the plus to that is I asked, uh, ladies, I asked to be part of this class. Like, hey, I know you hold, have an acting workshop. Can I join? He's like, yes, tomorrow. And it was 11 o'clock at night. And he's like, memorize these scripts by tomorrow. And I'm like, oh my God, what have I done? I, I had no interest. I was like, I just wanted to know if you're doing it, if I could join one. He's like, yeah, tomorrow. So I was like, I had no time to think about anything. So by the time I jumped in, I was like, I... I, like I was in the room before I really had any time to think about it. So I think you're really I was, good at manifesting, Neil. Yeah, <laughs> it's like way too good. <laughs> <laughs> I think this kind of leads into my thing. When I was thinking about you, Jack, and seeing how creative you are, I heard a quote on a podcast today, and it was it's by Johann Wolfgang, and it says, "Few people have the imagination for reality." And I thought, whoa, that's pretty interesting. And we're talking about Imagineers. Yes, right? And you are such a creative. I want to know how you take being creative and playing a role. Because I think we all play roles in life every day. I'm a mom. I'm a business owner. I'm this. I'm that. I'm a friend. You know, I'm, I'm these things. But how would you tell people to try and live their, their regular day-to-day -day life creatively and with imagination? Oh, that's a great question. Well, okay, so let's see. So I'm a big believer in seeing a therapist when you're feeling down or depressed. And that tends to happen in my life every 10 years. Um, I'll start to have some negative thoughts that get me down. And when I turned 50, that happened. And um, I knew, and I was feeling kind of well, anyway, I was feeling a little depressed. So I went to this therapist and he got me to uh, stop listening to my vulture, my ego telling me, you know, y'all, you wasted all your chances and you're ugly or whatever my vulture was saying. He got me to stop listening to it. And he got me to believe in myself again and to see that I'm special in the way that every human is. We're fucking magic right <laughs> yeah. all of us it's crazy right uh and he got me to see the magic in me and 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 he reminded me to shine my light and um the thing about shining your light is when you do what you love for the love of it you remind people the nature of love and give them permission to do the same mm. so for if i if i'm putting myself on film tickling myself and just doing something because I want to do it, not because I need eyes on me, but because I find this funny or I, or I had a need to say something. It's almost like you want to envision yourself. I don't do this consciously, but you, you want to imagine that it's almost like you're an angel in disguise. And by, by experiencing love in front of people, and that could be your love for cooking, your love for being a mother, your love for your job, you remind people that they can love their life and you give them permission to do so. Um, so the concept I shared with you about the concept that we're angels in disguise, 
that's from uh, uh, Marianne Williamson, who's one of the many self-help um, gurus that have really enriched my life. Marianne Williamson, the person, the politician. Well, she was a politician late, late in life. Her whole life, she's been an incredible self-help guru. And um, her tapes of her lectures absolutely changed my life in my um, uh, late 20s. I would listen to them constantly. And Me they too. Just, Me too. That's Make so great. Cool. And miracles. You got to go yes. read her stuff. She turned to love. Yeah. I find her easier to listen to than read, but I love her work. I love her work. But, you know, they're all saying the same thing. You know, you can get it through Eckhart Tolle or Louise Hay, whoever you feel like. Yes. It's all the, it's, they're all saying the same thing as is every religion is trying to say the same thing, which is love, you know, yes. choose love over fear. Yes. And that's what I teach actors. Love is key. And that, that kind of leads into my question. I also think another key in life is humor. And you obviously have been gifted with the ability to make people laugh. And Kim and I are kind of in a little bit of a stiff industry in the financial world. What would be the one thing you would give as a piece of advice if you're trying to incorporate humor into just like a, a meeting or your daily interactions with people? Okay, so humor is whatever tickles you. Like you can never make people laugh by trying to make them laugh. It's the worst way to go about it. If you're tickled, then the people around you are tickled. And so number one, I would just sit, remind yourself to release and destroy your need to be funny and just say, look, I want to, I want to be here today and I want to be tickling myself. And, and, um, Tickling yourself is simply tickling yourself with, with the honesty of whatever's happening in that moment. It's not about being clever or creative. It's about, about uh, just what honestly is going on. Uh, as an actor, I tickle myself with my genuine human behavior. That's what an actor is tickling themselves with because humans are weird. We're just, yes. We just are <laughs> and our behavior is weird. And so um, to incorporate humor, the first step, I would say, to get control of your vulture, because if you're entering a meeting with your ego or your vulture saying to you, you need to be perfect, you need to impress these people, these people are probably thinking that they don't like you. These are all the self-defeating thoughts your vulture says, so I recommend you get control of your vulture so <laughs> that, because, um, then you're living in, 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 in pure bliss because we are so, you, you, that's how you return to the secret to happiness, which is to be grateful, is to get that vulture to shut up because then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, I'm alive, I'm on earth, this is fucking amazing, you know? And so um, to get control of your vulture, it's like the first two chapters of my free book on my website, which uh, uh, we could maybe share with at the end. So if you're curious, oh, Jack, how do I get control of my vulture? It's right there at the start of my free book. But anyway, so you'd want to get rid of that vulture so that you can, you know, people use the word present. I don't like to use that because basically present is what we always are when our vulture isn't squawking. So it's really just about returning to love or, or to being alive and grateful for it. And then to just say, I don't need anything from these people, but I'm in a good mood. And if something pops into my head that's honest and makes me sort of tickles me, I'll, I can verbalize it. And if, if they don't laugh, that's fine. But I, I, by me, it being in a good mood and tickling myself, I remind them that life isn't so dire. I love that. That's perfect. That is fabulous. We're all friends here. Do we all have alter egos? Because my vulture is actually, I don't know if you've ever watched South Park. Yeah. You know, the sister with the headgear on, Shelly, who's always angry and yelling. When my vulture starts talking, it's Shelly. I'm like, there she is. That's great. Oh, I... <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, a lot of people talk about this concept. Um, there's an actor from Silent Alive who talks about this concept, but he calls it his monkey. Uh, but in the end, yeah. it, what it is, is it's our ego and your ego is the half of you that wants you to fail. And our job as humans on earth is to get control of our thoughts to, so that we can experience love on earth and not the, not the focus on the dark or fears. Because what you yeah. focus on gets stronger. So the darkness or the fears, they'll always be there. There'll always be shitty things happening. And I'm not saying to ignore them. We'll always be aware that they're there, but just where you put your focus determines your experience of life. Mm. So don't focus on Shelly. 
and just laugh, <laughs> just laugh at her and go. And I love that you'd made her Shelly. So you could just laugh and just go, oh, Shelly. <laughs> Very powerful. I like that. Anyways, ladies, I thank you so much for joining, Jack. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you jumping in. This is wonderful. Uh, and I look forward to promoting wait, the book. Okay, so the book uh, is at my website, jackplotnick.com. It's very easy to find the ebook there. Also at that website, you could watch all my YouTube comedy videos, but they're also on my YouTube channel, which is if you just Google Jack Plotnick, if you want to see the Disney videos, go, uh, you know, uh, type in Jack Plotnick Disney on YouTube and you'll see them all. Yeah, and so the book is called New Thoughts for Actors, but the first two sections are for anyone who wants to learn how to get control of their vulture. I'm putting it all down below. So everybody will find go you. Go and get it now. Me too. My girls, thank you. Girls Will Be Girls is now streaming on all outlets, a, high, a new high def version. So we're real happy about that. And the movie that I uh, wrote, co-wrote and directed is called Space Station 76. It stars Patrick Wilson from Insidious, Matt Bomer, Liv Tyler, Jerry O'Connell. It's a dark comedy about people living in space in the 1970s. So it's sort of like awesome. suburbia in space. That's fabulous. Again, I cannot recommend Girls Will Be Girls enough, but Space Station 76 is fantastic, as is Rubber, as is, uh, uh, hang on a sec. Oh my gosh, the one with the dog, it looks like a, uh, it's wrong. Wrong, thank you. Yeah. It was too yeah. long of a title for me to remember it. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. I feel honored to have been included. And this was super fun to chat with you today. And I love your questions. Thank, thank you, you so much for being part of it. You were wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to go tickle myself. Please. <laughs> All right.